Comic Book Savant, episode Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant Podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode is going to be a cutting the stack episode. It's been a little while since I've done one, and I do apologize for that. Um, I'm going to be trying to do more of these, and <clears throat> excuse me, you guys have kind of been liking when I started breaking them up and focusing on individual publishers and doing those um, instead of them being all over the place with issues I've been reading. So I've been uh, trying to focus on that a little bit more. I've been doing a ton of, I still do comic reviews, of course, because this is a comic book podcast. Um, if you haven't already, check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash comic book savant. I've been doing a lot of trade paperback reviews on the YouTube channel and I felt, you know, I, I was like, wow, when, when was the last time I did a cutting the stack episode for the audio podcast? So um, I'm going to try to ramp that up and in between reading trades and individual issues to put out more, more of these review episodes. And again, I do apologize. It's been a while. So if you do like these episodes, I, I do apologize for them. They've been kind of missing from the, the podcast rotation. Uh, recently, um, but I've been been sticking to my mantra of you know at the beginning of the year you know you set these your goals for the year and I said I wanted to get back into reading more comic books because I felt like though I do a comic book podcast there's so much other stuff that I cover that sometimes I neglect the basic thing which is talk, talking about the comics themselves. Um, not the industry. So um, I've been working on that and I've, I've read more this year than I probably have the past couple. Um, so I appreciate you guys supporting me through that journey that I've been taking on that and giving me great recommendations as well. Cause I've tried things that you guys recommended to me and really have enjoyed it. <clears throat> With all that being said, before we get into the meat of the episode, I want to give a shout out to my friends over at the comics podcast network. You can find them over at comics If you like what I do on the podcast here, you want want to find more comic book related content as far as podcasts and different shows stop by the comics podcast network it is a one-stop shop of just a, a place where different creators come together to just put their work out there and help support one another promote their podcast so if you again if you like what i'm doing here and you want to find more comic book stuff comic book podcast you can find a single person show like myself a roundtable discussion podcast um, you can find um, podcasts on individual characters. If you're a fan of, say, Thor or Spider-Man, you can find one on those particular characters or on particular teams or even publishers. So you have a wide variety. It's literally hundreds of different um, podcasts listed through the Comics Podcast Network. So if you have a moment, stop by comicspodcast.com and see what you can find over there because I think you really will enjoy it. And last but not least, I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor for this episode, which is InStockTrades.com, one of the best, if not the best place on the internet to go to find your collected editions. And it's not just collected editions. They deal with a manga as well, oversized issues. So like things like Action Comics 1000, you can find there. Uh, if you're looking for Omnibus, you know, that's hot right now. Oversized Collections, Marvel Masterworks, Absolute Edition. You, if you think it, and it's a bound, any type of bound edition, you can pretty much find it over at InStockTrades.com. They have discounts from 35 42 to up to 50% off with their deals of the week. The deals of the week are updated, um, I think, Tuesday afternoons each week, where they spotlight certain books at a full 50% off. If you are a U.S.-based customer and you order $50 or more, you get free shipping, but you have to be a U.S.-based customer. Don't let that discourage you if you happen to live outside the U.S. because you still get all the great savings um, around, and you they have some of the most competitive and um, international shipping rates around. I know that because some of my friends that live overseas um, that do YouTube videos can attest to it, and they've done one. I've talked about it a few uh, before. 
my friend Dano that does Dano comics over on YouTube. He did a great video highlighting, um, him being overseas and him ordering for in stock trades, how for certain collections, it saved him a ton of money than what it is to cost, like to go to his local comic shop there. I want to, I think Dano's in the Netherlands and he was saying that shipping during stock trades, though, sometimes it takes longer. The money he saved, even with the international shipping saved him a ton. So I know it from experience because a friend of mine has gone through it. Uh, so they do have some of the most competitive international shipping rates around. So you can still save a ton of money. So don't let it deter you if you're in a different country from not using uh, in-stock trades. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you do try them out and you enjoy the experience, let them know that you heard about them here on the Comic Book Savant Podcast. That will help me tremendously. Now, with all that being said, the focus on this Cutting cutting My Stack episode is Marvel. This is the fourth episode I've done on a Marvel-centric uh, Cutting My Stack episode. So I'm just going to jump in. And I'm only going to be talking about what five, five books this episode. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. Um... The first book that I want to talk about is Thrawn. It's a, what I think it's a six issue mini series. I was able to check out this first one through, um, Comixology Unlimited. It was posted, um, recently. So I said, oh, you know, I wanted to check it out. Um, so Thrawn is written by Jody Hauser. The artwork is done by Luke Ross. Colorist is Nolan Woodard. Um, and letter is Clayton Cowles. And, this was a, a really strong first issue, uh, based upon what I what I read of it. I definitely will say that um, I would get this this trade paperback if I can get this um, trade paperback at a reduced cost. Um, I, I would definitely pick it up. You, you know, I would because again. I'm balling on a budget. So if I saw this on sale at a reduced price or when it would go on sale, because a lot of times they do, especially since I primarily buy digitally, they'll do every so often, every few months, or when the next um, Star Wars movie ramps up, they do like a big sale. So like, you know, towards the end of the year or something, when the the next Star Wars sale would come, because I think this series is almost finished. I think issue five or six just hit the stand, so the trade should be coming soon. Um Next Star Wars sale, I would pick this up for like four or five bucks for sure. Um, it's a good premise there here. And I'm curious about the Thrawn character. I'm a big fan of um, Star Wars Rebels that just ended um, a few months back. And they incorporated Thrawn, Thrawn in, in the last few seasons of the show. And, and I'm very intrigued. I didn't know much about him. I didn't read the um, the, um, the the books that weren't the the Thrawn trilogy that was no that's no longer canon um, by Timothy Zahn. I know they they've done one book, and I think this um, this miniseries is kind of a um, a retelling of the this the book Timothy um, Zahn written uh, wrote last year, and I think a new book just came out not too long ago, but um, I think what I've heard people say online is that basically this is a kind of loose, condensed adaptation of the first Zon book in the in the now canon series for Thrawn, uh, so it's kind of cool. Um, the, the artwork is pretty good. Luke Ross, I've, I can he's been hit or miss for me. I, I think I did a review a little while back when they relaunched the Hercules series, and he was the artist on it, and I wasn't crazy about his artwork, but it's, it looks a little bit better here. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Jody Hauser writing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It flowed very nicely. Um, does a really good job making Thrawn a compelling character. Um and it really pulled me in. So I gave it a rating of a good read. I gave it an 8.75 out of 10. I'm definitely looking forward to um, reading the rest of this series at whatever point. Again, like I said, I can't see myself paying full price because I really can't see myself paying full price for any trade, especially digitally. But um, it's definitely something I would pick up in a moment. Seeing it on sale, I would snatch it up in a, in a, in a second for sure. Um, next book that I want to talk about is Black Panther issue eight. Um, this is from the 2010 Black Panther series. Uh, reason why, cause you know, it's kind of random certain books that I read. I, um, started reading the 2010 series shortly after, well, excuse me, going into the Black Panther movie back in February, um, 
through um, Comicsology Unlimited, they had um, access to the Black Panther trade, um, who is the Black Panther. And I read that, and um, they had a few of the other issues also on Comicsology Unlimited, and I started reading them. So, um, And I reviewed the, um, Black Panther, who is the Black Panther, on the YouTube channel. I did a trade trade review on that. And, and I it, it just got really curious into the series, and I enjoyed it. So I just kind of kept going forward with it. So number eight uh, was the next one I read, and um, it was written by Reginald uh, Hudlin. Artwork is done by David Yarden. Ink work done by Jay um, Linston. Color work is done by Dean White and lettering done by Randy uh, Gentile. And I will give this a rating for Wait for the Trade. I will give it a 6.5 out of 10. Um, it wasn't as strong as the What is the Black Panther story arc is coming out of that and kind of transitioning through. Um, I'm going to keep reading it. A few more issues I think are available to um, Comicsology Unlimited. I don't know, like, after those issues end, would I then spend money to finish? If the next couple hook me, then maybe. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But it's, it, it did taper off from that initial opening story arc that's in the Who is the Black Panther trade, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen the, the review I did on the YouTube channel. Check it out. But I, I recommend picking up that trade. This particular issue, like I said, it didn't make me like, I've got to read the next issue. I got to, you know, it didn't push me that forward. Um, but it's still solid. Next, I read of the current cable series. Um, I don't think it's been canceled, but Marvel flips stuff over so much. Um, cable issue two, I, the, I guess the last cutting is my stack episode I did for Marvel. I talked about issue one, so I wanted to read the second issue. Um, it took me forever to read this issue because I just, I liked the first issue of the series when I read it. I thought it was interesting, but for whatever reason, it was like a mental block. Every time I went to read this book, um, it, um, I just couldn't get into it. It was like I kept reading the first two pages, like over and over and over. And finally, like I just, it finally clicked for me and I got into it and I read it and I, uh, the story's decent, but let me go over the creative team on, on the book. It's written by James Robinson. Artwork is done by Carlos Pacheco. Uh, anchor is Rafael, uh, Fortiez. Colorist is, uh, Jesus Artrov and Federico Bli, and lettering done by Corey Pettit. Um, and like I said, so it was kind of hard for me to read because I attempted to read it a few different times, and and maybe necessarily it wasn't the book; it was me. Because certain times, like you, you know, especially me reading stuff digitally a lot, I will go into my um, queue, especially on Comicsology, um, and like they'll show you books you had started reading, and I have seen it up there for like months, and I'm like. I need to just, it's one comic. I just need to finish reading this cable book. And like every time, maybe I was sleeping and I'm like, okay, I'm going to knock it out real quick before I go to bed, you know, or whatever. And I just, it I just never would resonate enough for me to finish it. And then I read it with like no problem. And it's, it's a fine story. Mainly I'm a huge fan of Carlos Pacheco. So most stuff that he, he works on, I will, I will give it a try. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not, I know of James Robinson. I'm, I'm trying to think about certain works of his that I just if I read and I was a huge fan of. I'm not really sure. Um, the writing's fine. The story is, is somewhat inter- is actually interesting. Um, and I, I think some more of the I think the least the first story arc has become available on Unlimited. So I'm going to read the, the rest of them. But really, the main pull of me even trying the book was was Carlos Pacheco's artwork. I just had to say it. He's a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, so, and I, I, you know, he's one of my top artists of all time. So again, anything I see his name on just on the strength of it being him. Um, I don't think I've outside of when cable first kind of came in. Well, let me not tell that lie. I kind of gravitate because I kind of gravitate to cable whenever I see a new cable series, just based on the fact that, I'm a, you know, I'm a kid from the eighties and the nineties were a big thing with X force and all that kind of stuff. And he always was just like a cool design. So I based the little kid of me, the sucker in me, just still in my, 
thinks that Cable is a cool looking character and sometimes he gets not the best story. So um, this is a competent story. Like I said, it didn't pull me in and take me to a whole nother level with the character. Like he, you know, like he's super interesting. I think the last series they did, did a better job in getting me more interested in him. Well, I think Cable in the X-Force uh, that my other one of my other favorite artists, La Roca, was um, Severo La Roca was working on. I liked a little bit better, and it making me kind of get into the character of Cable more. But I'm only two issues in, and I'm gonna like I said, I'm, I, the rest of them came available on Unlimited, so I'm, I'm gonna definitely read the the arc. It's it it's, has my interest slightly. It hasn't pulled me 100 percent in, but we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Um, next up, I have Rocket Raccoon issue one. Um, this is a part of the Grounded story arc that they they did. Um, this was from a couple of years ago. Um, this series, I, I, I don't they they roll out so much stuff. I, I need to start putting year stamps on everything because they'll flip a series over and over again. But this was the number one issue of that series. Um, it was written by Matthew Rosenberg. Artwork done by um, Jorge uh, Cayel. Co- Coyello, um, colorist is Antonio Fabella, and uh, lettering is done by Jeff Eckleberry. And um, I like, I have, you know, here's my thing. What I know of Rocket Raccoon normally comes from what I've learned from the MCU films. Um, Rocket Raccoon was not a popular character that much in the 80s when I was growing up. They were kind of, he was a kind of throwaway character. Only reason I ever knew of Rocket Raccoon was based on. Uh, the Marvel Universe handbooks. I used to love those things. Um, and my cousin, I, I used to tell the story all the time how um, I had two older cousins that were heavily in the comics. So they would hand me down a lot of stuff. And when we would go to their house um, on the weekends and so forth, because we, we stayed in the same state, we stayed in, this, like, in different cities, but very close. So we would go for like Sunday dinners and stuff like that. And I used to camp out in their room and, and read through their comics. And they had all the issues of the Marvel handbook. And I learned about a lot of characters that I didn't have access to comics that had featured them, but I could know about them by reading these encyclopedia-type handbooks. I missed them so much. And uh, Marvel and DC, I think Marvel's was the Marvel Universe handbook and dc was who's who and dc never followed through as much with them over the years i think like dc did who's who in like the mid 80s like 80 45 and then dc i mean in marvel like did them they did a couple for a couple of years where they um they did them they would sell well um they used to have i don't know if they've been reprinted in the um, essential editions because now they they switch from um, no wait epic collections they used to be essentials they were reprints in like big big newsprint just cheaply printed um, like over not oversized but regular size like thick volumes that they used to do on the cheap and back when I still had physical comics I I went back and bought them all because it, it was hard to find the individual issues so I bought the reprints I don't know if they've done it I if they would I swear like if I couldn't get it digitally I would I would probably buy that physically because I it just was so cool it was an encyclopedia uh, this is a total tangent y'all bear with me because sometimes I, I will talk about stuff and I like I realize it like while I'm talking that it's a tangent, but it's still all about comic books. So hopefully y'all are not laughing too much at me as you're listening to this, because I probably if I were you, I probably would be laughing at this old man rambling on about comics. But anyway, that's what I'm saying about the Marvel um, Universe handbook um, that I would probably buy that physically because it was such a cool thing because they would tell you like w- what comics were the origin. They would give you the origin story. They would give you their power set, all that kind of stuff, their group affiliations. It, it cataloged everything in the Marvel universe, like in the DC universe as well for their who's who. Um, it was so cool. And it opened me up so much to the, bigger world of comics because I stayed in a small town. I only could go to, it was only one comic shop that was the town over that I couldn't go to that often. And besides that, it was one little gas station that had a convenience store that had one spinner rack that I think that had like, 
I think it was like 16 books on it, like eight DC, eight Marvel. And that was pretty much my exposure to comics really until I was in my twenties and I moved to a bigger town that had multiple comic shops. That was like my experience growing up with comics. Um, so I digress to say I had not much exposure to rocket as a kid. Uh, <laughs> That was a long way to get to that, but that's what I was trying to say. So this comic intrigued me because, honestly, Rocket Raccoon is one of my favorite characters in the Marvel MCU films. He's, like, one of my favorite characters. I never thought... I thought it was the craziest thing when I saw him in the first time they released any footage for Guardians. And it was like, it's no way this is going to work. And I watched that movie, and I said, that is my favorite character in this film. Um, yes. And um, so I was intrigued by this book. I read it. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a good read, a 7 out of 10. I want to check out more of this, this series. It definitely, um, Matthew Rosenberg nailed the tone of the rocket that I know from the movies totally. So I'm into it for that. It wasn't much story. Well, I mean, I guess he's stuck on Earth and he's trying to get off Earth. So it's, it's kind of a compelling story and how, you know, it, it plays on certain character beats from the movies on, you know, like people keep calling him like rat and call him everything else except the raccoon. And, you know, it's kind of a good parallel to like race, racism and, you know, because he's like an alien and, and like how people are perceiving him and he's feeling like maybe I could fit in here, but he's like, he'll, I'll never be accepted. Let me go back out to space where I don't have to worry about these things and I can kind of be on my own. And he's separated from his family with the guardians, I guess something in the guardians book where they split up or they were broken up at the time and you know he's out on his own and he's he's stuck on earth trying to figure it out and it's a cool cameo in it by the, the human torch and it's, it's just like fun but it's just the vibe if you like um rocket from what you know from the mcu movies it's, it's like a fun little series that because it riffs off that vibe of the character <clears throat> now, the last book I'm going to talk about in this episode is Spirits of Vengeance, Issue 1. This was like a mini series that came out a few years ago. Now, I'm doing uh, some research on, a, I don't know if it's going to be a video or a podcast episode where, I think it's going to be a video on the YouTube channel. Yes, because uh, um, a subscriber asked me to do it where they wanted me to test out um Marvel Unlimited. I've always said I'm not a huge fan of Marvel Unlimited. I've tried it in the past, but, you know, in trying something, like, you'll try it once, and you'll be like, I don't really like it, and, you know, it was a free month, so I really didn't use it the rest of the time, canceled it, I moved on. Um, so, he really was like, you know, you talk highly about, you know, Comixology Unlimited, will you, you know, do a video doing a comparison, like, you try that. So, um, with Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out, and this is one thing for you guys to know, if you ever want to try Marvel Unlimited, if you check out Marvel.com, um, they, like, whenever it's a big movie or TV show premieres, they'll do, like, a special code where, like, you'll get it half price for a month, or you get it free for a month. Um, so if you ever just want to try it to see if it's a service you might like, you can. Um, so they had a deal, like, if you put in the code WASP, you got this, you got um, Marvel Unlimited for two cents for the month. So I was like, fine, I, this is a great time because I wouldn't pay for it because um, I wouldn't pay full price for it anyway. Um, so I was going through just trying to find stuff to read, and I came across uh, Spirits of Vengeance. And I've heard different people talk about Spirits of Vengeance. And I was like, oh, you know, and that it could be a cool Netflix show um, if they if they did it. So I was like, okay, let me just check out this book. It's here. Like, I'm just searching, trying to use the interface. And it's clunky, and it's not good search. So it, like, kind of popped up. And I said, fine, I'm going to try it. So I, I decided to read the first issue of it. Um, it's written by Victor Glishner. Glish, Glishler? Artwork is done by David uh, Baldon. Um, color work is done by Andres Mosa. And lettering done by Corey Pettit. Um, this is definitely something because it's like the supernatural side. You got a team of, of um, Hellstorm, uh, Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, Blade, 
and I think they said Santana is going to be in it and someone else. But in this first issue, you, you see Ghost Rider, you see Hellstorm, and at the very end, they bring in Blade. And it's the supernatural kind of team of heroes. It's different from what I normally read because that's kind of a section that I don't get into too heavily. Uh, but it did pick my interest. I would at least seek out this first arc. I don't know if it was an ongoing or a miniseries, but I would read, I would like read it. If the price was right, or I just could get it through Marvel Unlimited or my Comicsology Unlimited subscription and check out the issues, or you know, if, if I pay like, because a lot of times they have like back older back issues for like, because um, I have um, through Comicsology Unlimited, you get an additional discount. So like the books normally like are two bucks. So if I can get them for like, I think with my discount they knock it down. I get them for like two seventy nine or excuse me, 179 or 169 Like, I potentially, for this series, just because it's something different, and I like to read different stuff sometimes, I would pick it up with the prices right, or even, you know, God forbid, like, it's Halloween or something, and they have them for, like, 99 cent an issue, I would, like, gobble them up and, and read them for sure. But, you know, if the price is right, I definitely would finish reading this. The visuals are good, the writing was solid, I gave it a 6.75 out of 10, which is, like, a wait for the trade you know, rating. So definitely price being, um, maximum concern for me because I'm a bargain hunter at the right price. I would snatch these up in a second to read. Uh, I don't think I would invest more than like I said, that $2 issue threshold to read more of it. Um, I would pick it up in a minute at, um, a dollar issue. Um, cause I'm cheap and I don't have a lot of money. So I got to make it stretch. So that's just a personal dilemma. Uh, so these are just some of the books I kind of try to jump all over the place with, with Marvel to read different books from different eras to see, you know, what's available. Um, I try to take advantage of the subscription services that I use. I try to buy as little as possible, you know, cause especially when books were first coming out, you're paying full cover price. And it sucks that even though you buy digitally, you don't have the overhead that, that the same type of overhead costs that you have with print comics. We still kind of, you know, to keep things properly competitive, I have to pay the same, um, you know, we have to pay the same exact amount that people do for in-store comics, but it is what it is. So I, that's why I have to be frugal on how I spend the limited money I have for comics, you know, and I think we all kind of have that struggle. So I try to work around the best I can. So when I review stuff, I try to review stuff from all over the place. And I just try different stuff sometimes. Like sometimes I just close my eyes and be like, oh, I'm going to pick something. Let me pick it and review it. And sometimes, like I said, I found some different things like Rocket. I haven't read any of the Guardian stuff. Um, so it, now I, it's cur- it has me curious about more of the different Guardian books um, as well because I enjoy the characters from the movie. So I should enjoy the comics. So it, it opens you up when you just kind of expand your horizons a little bit. But, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all I have for you guys for this episode. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get to uh, 100 subscribers on that channel before um, for August. That's my goal for the end of August, to, have, to be at 100 subscribers. I'm somewhere in the 60s or 70s right now, so I'm not too far away. So if you haven't, stop by and check out the Comic Book Savant on YouTube. Do so. You can do a search on YouTube for Comic Book Savant, or you can just do youtube.com forward slash comic book savant, one word, and it'll take you right to my homepage. And subscribe, and don't click, you know, forget, if you do subscribe, click the bell notification. It'll notify you whenever new episodes drop on the, um, on the channel. <clears throat> and I normally put out content two days out of the week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, similar to what I do here when I drop two pieces of content. So those are um, those days definitely. But if you click the bell notification, you'll know anytime new content is dropped. <clears throat> also, if you anything that I talk about during the show, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is acting up. Um, if you ever forget, like links to the social media, anything that's related to the show at all, if you want to find it, you can always go to the website, which is comicbooksavant.com. Uh, that's the one-stop shop for anything that I'm doing that I'm involved with. You can find it there. Um, and that's all I have for you guys. You know, I appreciate all your support. Um, and I will see you guys next week for another episode of Comic Book Savant. You guys have a good week. Be good. Another episode probably will drop this week as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so much stuff is going on. Like I said, I'm working hard behind the scenes. August is going to be a big month. You guys, like I said, we're going to go full, full tilt and celebrating, um, going into the 13th year of the podcast. Um, 
and celebrating about a year. It's been just about a year now that I've been doing the YouTube channel. It's been slow going. Um, it's been a big learning curve for me, but I want to celebrate it all and, and like really blow it out. So I got big plans for that. So um, check out the website, follow me on social media, all at Comic Book Savant, and I will see you guys soon. Take care.